Welcome to the Complete Musician Podcast Halloween Spooktacular with your hosts, James Vegas and Drew Phillips. Welcome to the special Halloween episode of the Complete Musician Podcast. I'm Spooky Drew. Ah! Oh. Sorry, I, I got scared. Well, I'm um, scary looking, so that makes sense. Well, I'm apparently Jumpy James. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're here to bring you a special podcast from the Koromoto Horn Duo. Uh, we're going to do some fun special Halloween activities today. Like eat a bunch of candy. That's it. And scare little kids. Oh, Lots wait. of candy. Uh, and scaring little kids. Except just not candy corn, because that stuff is gross and if you think it's not then you are wrong hold on wait wait for real you don't you don't like candy corn it's disgu- it's plastic it's recycled it's so plastic good the it's... last candy corn was manufactured in 1963 and it's been stored in a warehouse ever since okay so you have to give up the fact that like it's part wax and like part styrofoam and just like eat it it's no oh, it's disgusting i i did not know that about you well, I'm anyway, a little upset, but I'll get over it. And we're going to go on to our first Halloween activity today, uh, which is my activity. Well, I think we're both kind of doing similar activities, but uh, our, our first activity is we're going to do some Mad Libs. Woohoo! Halloween Mad Libs. Yay. Okay, so we have to invent the rules for these as they go along because Mad Libs get boring unless they have fun rules. And so the first that we're, we're, the first one that we're going to do <clears throat> is entitled A Scary Halloween Story. Mm. And I'm writing Most everything are. in because I'm not digitally cool, and I actually printed them off the internet. So I'm going to write them in, and then I'm going to put them on uh, the put them on our Facebook page so everyone oh, can good. see what Excellent. they were. Now, the okay, spooky story. Well, first one. For, for the rules for this one uh, is that I'm, I'm going to amend it because I'm going to talk about music school. Because <laughs> uh, music. I get I, it. I know. Because it talks about a haunted school. So I'm going to uh, amend it and say music school. The other rule is you can't just say pee, poop, and fart as the nouns. Whoa, whoa, hey, this is a clean podcast. Let's let's leave that language at home. I'm just, <laughs> You're right. All that body language. I'm just saying... Well, I, okay, oh, some, okay, some pee. I mean, it is Halloween, so you get like the poop scared out of you. So you know, that's true. And I guess if some people get too scared, they fart. So it, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> All right, here's what I need. Uh, I need an adjective, or yeah, an adjective. So this is music school related, right? This is music school related. Yeah. So imagine yourself as a. Okay, here's your scenario. You are a uh, a freshman hmm. in music school. You play the bassoon, mm-hmm. and you've just taken Yikes. a gigantic music history test that you probably failed. That's that's going to hit home for a lot of people. <laughs> oh, no. It's too real. Okay, so uh, that's what Halloween is. It's, like, real. Anyway. Uh, I guess. I guess. So, All right, what's the I, first? I need an adjective. Sleepy. Sleepy. Okay, next. I need someone's first name. N- Jason. J- Stereotypical, but okay. Um, <laughs> I need another adjective. Um, hmm. Hungry. Hungry. Is that because you're hungry? It's a music student. Oh, I'm hungry, so. All right, and now I need a noun. Um, oh, gosh, these are so hard. Boombox. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That is not a word I expected you to say. <laughs> okay. I need a verb. Um, let's see. Uh, running. Running. Okay. Or just like run. Uh, no, you're right. It need to be a gerund. So. Okay. No. Yes. I mean, is that okay. the subway guy? Um, the gerund. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> that was a really grammatical term. Uh, I need an animal. Um... Let's go with a liger. <laughs> Which is? It's the cross between a lion and a tiger. <laughs> That's pretty scary. All right, yes. I need another ING verb. Um, These are really good for, like, grammar. Yeah. Let's anyway. do uh, eating. 
eating. Now I need an adverb. Uh, it would lazily work. Lazily, yeah. Okay, another adjective. Aquamarine. <laughs> okay. I don't know uh, how that has to do with a music student, but it, it, whatever. Uh, okay, I need another first name. Liesel. Not Michael. Okay. What? Liesel. Liesel. Ooh, that's very. Was that Swiss of you? No, that's Austrian. Ah, mm -hmm. it's very Austrian of you. All right, uh, adjective. Rambunctious. I can't spell rambunctious. <laughs> I'm ending it with an S H U S. Shus. Okay, uh, I need a noun. Bassoon. Oh. Uh, another ing verb. Hmm. Oh, I wanted to say depressing, but that wouldn't really oh. make sense. Well, I unless mean, it's like pushing down. Yeah, it's not so really. Okay, we're gonna say let's it. Let's do. Okay. Nope, depressing. Done. Like a tongue depressing. Okay, and now I need a plural noun. Abraham Lincoln. Let's link Abraham Lincoln's. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, that's oh, perfect. I said formal noun. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then I need another <laughs> ing verb. Um, video gaming. Wow. Okay. I think I just made <laughs> up a verb. Okay, yeah. All right. So this is a scary Halloween story, and it's not only about the school, but it's about the cafeteria. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they say that my music school is haunted. My sleepy friend Jason says she saw a hungry boombox floating at the end of the hall near the cafeteria. <laughs> Some say if you run down the hallway at night, you'll hear a liger eating lazily. My <laughs> my aqua my aquamarine friend Liesel saw a a rambunctious bassoon depressing under one of the tables once. <laughs> what? I hope I never see any Abraham Lincoln's video gaming. Eating lunch there is scary <laughs> enough. Wow. That was a good one. That was a masterpiece. Okay. Okay, so I have mine up here, and let's start with a plural noun. Blenders. Another plural noun. Chickens. A noun. Um, mucus. Mucus? Mucus. Ew. Another <laughs> noun. Um, uh, pro. Another noun. Another noun. Uh, mm -hmm. uh okay, ghost. Ooh, good one. Yeah. Okay, plural noun. So many nouns. Um, I know. Let's see. Uh, can I do a collective noun? Two hours later. Okay, you ready for this? I am very excited. Here we go. This is your opus. My opus? Ooh. Mm. Halloween is my favorite holiday because we get to dress up in blenders <laughs> and visit <laughs> chickens in our mucus <laughs> saying, crow or ghost? In exchange for a bag of a parliament of owls. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so oozing. <laughs> this year I'm gonna dress up as a slimy radish. <laughs> My costume's gonna be so vermilion. It'll be made with soft trebles and bases, so it's sure to win the, <laughs> the loud horn contest. <laughs> That's perfect. The loud horn contest. I know some people that would win that one. Yeah. I also love to cry conductors for Halloween. <laughs> I use special carving bassoons to coarsely thicken a face into my work. That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, read that sentence again. That was too good. I use special carving bassoons to coarsely thicken a face into my work. That's <laughs> horrible. Then we put a lightsaber inside and light it. That actually works really yeah, well. Yeah. Then we put a lightsaber inside and light it so that the demon poops. Oh. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, hey, that was my opus. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Okay, <laughs> you should totally print that one out. That was too good. I wonder if I spelled everything right. 
I guess it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Like I said, I miss Bud Rainbow Juice. Okay, that was... I liked our Halloween Mad Libs. Mine was much shorter, but I like that one. That was a very ma- uh, mm-hmm. very um, mangum opus, so pretty good. It was good. Yeah, I, it was very spooky. Very. Mm. Especially all those worms and mm-hmm. uh, and my slimy radish costume. I think that actually sounds like a good idea. Hmm. Slimy radish. Anyway. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to go on to our next segment, but before that, we are going to hear from our unofficial sponsor. Go! If you're looking for a frightfully good time this Halloween, come on down behind where Toys R Us used to be on Nightmare on Elm Street and visit the Halloweeny Carnival, open from 5 p.m. to whenever you leave. You won't. This year's main attractions include Carlo Jeswaldo's House of Horrors. I almost lost my skin in there. Oh, did you almost jump out of it? No, like, he actually murdered people in the first scale degree. Right on! Prokofiev's Pumpkin Patch. Where one in every ten pumpkins is a mistake. Copeland's newest rodeo movement, Hayride. A slow ride in a slow machine. Be sure to check out our food vendors, including Tater Totentons, Monster Mashed Potatoes, and Francais French Fries. It's all potatoes. They are the scariest vegetable. The Candy Corno Contest. How many candy corns can you shove in your horn and still play the short call? Last year we had the Mary had a little lamb go round, but we got rid of it, and this year we turned it into the Silence of the Mary had a little lambs, which is much better. Good wins! Heck, Berlioz's fantastic roller coaster. Watch out for that beam! If you don't watch out, you'll lose your head. And don't miss our other great attractions, such as the Costume Contest, the Pumpkin Pie Bake Off, and Dennis Brains Zombie Survival Experience. So come on down in your best costume and enjoy the carnival. You'll be dying to come back next year. And we're back. Okay, our next Halloween activity. I have a list for you. Ooh. Yeah. And I made a list, uh, and so I'm going to read it, and we can have any discussion on it. You'll probably disagree with some of it, but it's I think it's funny. I'll disagree with it for the sake of having a, an engaging conversation. Okay. Well, you'll definitely disagree with one of these, but anyway. Um, so my list Does is it have that... to do with candy corn? No, it doesn't have to do with candy corn. Okay. It's Okay, I made a list, and these are... The six scariest composers in classical music. Mm. So I composers made, of classical music or just of classical music. Okay, like they're all okay. most of them are dead. So, anyway. well, the ones that are dead that came back to life would be the scariest, probably. I know, um, but I'm talking about like yeah, I'm okay. talking about their them and their life. So anyway, they're not really well. Okay, they're kind of ranked in order, sort of. And some of them okay. are, like, not scary, but just, like, you would not want to associate with them in sure. like, life. So, anyway. All right. The first uh, one on my list is uh, – hold on. Let me find my list. Okay. My first one is uh, is Beethoven. Uh, Beethoven is scary? My oh, it's scary. Okay. So, here's why. I made, I, I made a, a, a couple reasons why. Every single one of them has, like, reasons. Okay. okay. The first one, that hair – yeah, it did look and like he stuck a fork like, into an electric socket. Enough, know. yeah, right. Like enough said. That hair. All you have to do is search a picture, and like he's terrifying. I would not want to see him. Um, the other thing that's scary about him, he lived in like squalor and shame. Like that's mm-hmm. gross. Like he like left food everywhere and was constantly in disagreement with his landlords. So he probably wanted to murder them. Uh, and that's anyway. Uh, he was also paranoid and always suspected people of stealing from him. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Uh, and he would shout at people, which is kind of crazy. Like, I picture... <laughs> I mean, that's true. Like, and I picture like Jack Torrance from The Shining, like shouting at people, like shouting, mm -hmm. you know, "Here's Johnny" or whatever. I could picture Beethoven doing that. Anyway, oh yeah, totally. He he, he also wrote music for dead animals. Did hmm. you know that he wrote a music? His one of his first pieces he ever wrote was a music for a dead poodle. Well, there you go. I, I didn't know if you knew that. Was that a new? fact? Uh, I did not. That is a new fact. So. Just dead. as well as the fact that apparently, uh, you know, they had electric outlets back when he was alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's how he styled his hair every day. Right. Uh, so that was, anyway, so dead poodles, gross. So anyway, Beethoven, number, uh, not number one. He's number six, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next uh, of the scariest composers that have lived, uh, I said Handel. Mm -hmm. Handel. Uh, only, and for the, uh, you know, there's that myth. Or not myth, but I guess there's that story that he pushed a soprano out of a window because he was mad at her. Mm. Okay. Well, anyway, I, that's I a, don't know that one, but that's oh. that's pretty spooky. Okay, so that's what he is claimed. He is claimed. Well, they always said that he had a really terrible temper, and mm -hmm. that he couldn't stand for uh, for like ensembles to be out of tune and all that kind of stuff. So. And he couldn't stand sopranos, or, or like he he really had problems with them because of his temper. So anyway, he the story goes that he threatened he's gonna, or he did push one out of a window because mm -hmm. he couldn't sing or whatever. But anyway, that was a story. He he didn't. Turns but. out the window was only a foot off the ground. And <laughs> right, it was just melodramatic. Right. So it's uh, right, not not a big deal. But uh, anyway, because of that, ladies, you know, watch out because the handle. Um, He's too scary to handle. But mm. it, it, to that whole end of that story, okay, I found out something that's kind of funny that has to do with Handel. So uh, that particular soprano that he was accused of pushing out a window, or at least threatening, her name was Francesca Cuzzoni, and apparently she was a big soprano of the day. But this woman, she's also could have made the list, even though she wasn't a composer, because she got into a hair-pulling, screaming, punching, and biting brawl in the middle of a performance of some opera with a rival soprano, and they tore each other's costumes off and eventually had to be dragged off stage. That sounds like a precursor to the WWE. I know, <laughs> right? Like the, the WWE. That doesn't sound spooky. That sounds like entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the WWE divas, like their right. predecessors is right there. Anyway, so I thought that was kind of crazy. That girl, like, th anyway, they were, like, tearing each other's clothes off and, like, had to be dragged off stage. The thing is, do you think the audience knew or do you think that was part of the act? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's totally. Because these two, like, there was that Francesca Cazzoni lady. And the other soprano, her name was Faustina Bordoni. And mm. they were, like, rivals. Like, people oh, okay. in, in the UK, like, chose sides of each of them. And so they came to this. Uh, and the reason that they got into such a brawl is because at this performance, when one soprano would try to sing, that was they were divided. Like, they would start booing. Like, boo! <laughs> and so no one could hear. And so eventually the entire crowd got into a fight. And then these two Sopranos got in a fight. Nice. So anyway, there's that. Uh, okay, so that's number five. Number four. Uh, I said John Williams. Mm. And the sole reason is because he's old and old people are scary. <laughs> he's not... <laughs> You're referring to the classical guitarist, John Williams, of course, not uh, the yes, composer exactly. of film music, John Williams, right? No, of course not, but he is old, and he is scary. And he also, also, he wrote Jaws, which is by far one of the most ominous-sounding things ever. Yeah, that's pretty spooky. That's pretty spooky. And then if you – okay, I don't know. You're, yeah, you're sitting in front of your computer. Like, Google John Williams and just look at the pictures – Okay, yeah, I, so I know what he looks like. Or, oh, I know, but high like, resolution you, pictures never look good on anyone. No, no, it's not just that. It's that he is like the most super intense stare, and he does not know how to smile except when he's laughing. <laughs> and so, all of the pictures on Google Image Search, like if you're listening, Google Image Search John Williams, all of the pictures are like his head cocked at like a 45 degree angle, staring intently at the camera into your soul, or he's and he's laughing when he's actually smiling, but otherwise. No smile. That's, that's what the look of confidence looks like. <laughs> Is that what confidence looks like? Well, what, that's what confidence slash being blinded by photographer's flashes <laughs> looks like. Maybe that's and true. And a general jaded sense of, of well, paparazzi. Well, there you go. That's uh, so that, that's my defense for John Williams. I know. you. I know. And we all love John Williams. But the anyway, most humble, spooky scary. man alive. See, there you go. Humble and spooky. But 
that I just his pictures. That's he just looks so intense. It's terrifying. I would hate to meet him like in a haunted house. That's, I'd love to. Well, I mean, okay, I'd like to meet him. But, <laughs> and, yeah, okay, we can take it to a haunted house when he, you know, because he listens to the Complete Musician podcast. So I'm sure he does. You yes. know, we'll. Um, I mean, he he's probably emailed us by now. So you know, we'll we'll yep. get with him. We'll go to a place anyway. Okay, so that was number. Who's five. next? Number five is uh, list on this list. Okay, uh. so list, right? And so I learned some things about list. First of all, did you know list was obsessed with death? Mm. I didn't know that he when he lived in Paris, he would often go visit the gallows just to like watch the people that were condemned to die. Wow, I he mean, would just go watch them. Everyone that's, needs a hobby, but that's a little uh... <laughs> like ew. Yeah, and so personal tragedies almost led to him becoming a monk. I don't know if you knew that, but when he he like tried to join like the male version of a convent, I, I don't know what that is, like the monastery, I guess, is that it? But he could not become a monk, but he uh, he, he tried. He was like the lowest level of like clergy, and so they actually called him Abbot List for the rest of his life after he <laughs> tried to do that. I didn't know that. Um, and if we've learned anything from either The Exorcist or the movie The Omen, being a priest is creepy. So, yep, right. just saying. Um, also, he composed the work to- Totentons. Is that how you say that? Oh, yeah. The Totentons. Yeah. Anyway, that's literally German for Dance of Death. Mm-hmm. So, I thought that was kind of weird and creepy. He also has giant hands, which are just yeah. like, oh, how, yeah. how do you play that music if you're not like a spider? I guess his hands are like so big so he could like choke you. <laughs> It'd be pretty easy to wrap the your handler. <laughs> He's the Scranton Strangler, didn't you know that? That was List. Off the, oh, okay. okay. Office puns aside. Okay. Now, two more. All right. Uh, number two is is Berlioz, okay? Okay, so here's what I learned about Berlioz. Cereal that never quite made it. Berlioz. Aww. Aww. That was a good one. Good one. Uh, so Berlioz. He, I did not know this about him. Berlioz was engaged to some girl and in paris and his future like mother-in-law decided they're not going to get married and married his fiance off to some dude Hmm. so i didn't know that but here's what he did berlioz planned to murder his ex-fiance and her husband with two revolvers and then he wanted to kill himself but he brought a disguise to get in to like sneak into their house and he brought poison as a backup in case the guns didn't work i guess uh, but when he got to the French border, he apparently lost his disguise somewhere and decided that he was going to forego his plan of being a homicidal maniac. So that's good. Um, that's um, that's uh, it's a very a, troubled man. So he got really close to like being a murderer. And speaking of murderers, number one, which you may know, is Carlo uh, Giswaldo. Oh. Yeah, uh, I I guess I missed this in music history. Uh, but anyway, just Waldo, you know, the guy that, like, composed all the sacred magicals, and he was, like, mm-hmm. a count of Verona or something. Well, he was totally a murderer um, mm-hmm. because he murdered his wife. And murderer her... in the, the second scale degree. Uh, you... oh, s- no. <laughs> boo. Uh, but he murdered his wife and her lover when he caught them in the act, mm-hmm. red-handed, uh, and he literally mutilated their bodies with a knife, and then he dragged their bodies in front of his castle and left them there. And servants reported that after he left the room the first time by murdering them, he went back again because he wasn't sure they were dead yet. And if there are any kids listening, this is all just make-believe. None of these things actually <laughs> happen. <laughs> and Because so, Halloween is a happy hol- It's a happy holiday. It's not actually like paganism. Unless you're, right, and unless you're like the wife of uh, Giswaldo. And so the funniest thing is that since he was like a nobleman, he uh, didn't get in trouble because yeah, they said you didn't commit pretty a funny. crime. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. They were like, oh, well, you're rich and, like, account or whatever, so you're fine. And so he was – and it's not like he wasn't proud of it. He told everyone <laughs> and left their bodies in front of his house. So he was a total psycho. So, so is that why people put out things in front of their house, like costumes and stuff? Is that <laughs> did all because Gisaldo of do that? Waldo? <laughs> because, because he, did he murdered start the people? tradition of people <laughs> sitting on their porches like a, like a body? Like a corpse? And, yeah. Maybe it was. I don't know. Like, that would be a good – I mean, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, he was a total psycho. So that's my list of the six creepiest or, like, scariest composers in classical music. Wow. Well, I learned a lot. 
I I learned a lot that I didn't want to know. I did. To be honest. I did too. So anyway, there's our uh, scary list. Uh, And now we're going to go to our next unofficial sponsor. And now, a spooky reading from an excerpt from the spooky book, The Memoir of Blubberton Tubbs. If I can but reach that toilet, thought Blubberton Tubbs, I am obtuse. But then he faulted the depressed steed, panting and calculating close behind him. He even fancied that he felt his own demise. Another verbose kick in the playground and an old gunpowder sprang upon the Taco Supreme. He thundered over the seemingly innocuous pennies. He gained the opposite zebra-striped gum, and now Blubberton Tubbs cast a look behind him to see if his pursuer should vanish, according to rule, in a flash of basketball and tuba. Just then, he saw the goblin farting in his laptops. And in the very act of hurling his helicopter at him, Blubberton Tubbs endeavored to eat the horrible aglet, but was too late. It encountered his chad with a tremendous head foam. He was tumbled headlong into the lamppost, and Gunpowder, the burnt steed, and the goblin Fortnite tutor passed by like a tissue. This has been a spooky excerpt reading from the spooky book, The Memoir of Blubberton Tubbs. Okay, and we're back after a riveting sponsor. I'm so glad that they sponsor our podcast. I don't know. How kind. In an official, unofficial sponsor. A very kind of unofficial, way. official way. Yep. So, okay. We did some ad libs. We did some history. did some learning. Now That's we're going important. to, um, I don't know if we'll necessarily do some learning, but we're going to ask some questions, some Halloween trivia questions. Ooh. and they're questions that just scanning over i didn't know the answers to but here's the thing we know the answers to them so we're going to tell you what the answers are so and don't question is, us yeah, don't question it's because all right. um i at least took you know a, a whole year of classes on halloween lore in Me my too. doctorate my cognate is in halloween lore yep so um, let me just go through some of these questions and see what would be the best one. And I could even tell you the right answer, but um, no. I think it'd be more fun if we... I mean, we're going to give the right answer. So anyway... We're going to give the right answer. Here we go. Um, okay. What item is banned only during Halloween from 12 a.m. October 31st to 12 p.m. November 1st in Hollywood, California? Frogs. That's... Yeah. How did you know? Because Frogs. I was going to say toads, actually, because, like, you know, that's mm, what you use in most right. soups. Well, it's not actually all of the frog. It's just the eyes. Oh, okay. Eyeless frogs are allowed. Mm-hmm. And you're only allowed to have them as pets. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just mm-hmm. eyeless frogs. Mm-hmm. That's it. So you're right. Yeah. That's the answer. I know. Um, it's definitely not silly string. Nope. Okay, the next question is, in the correct spelling of Halloween... Where is the apostrophe placed? In the correct spelling of Halloween? Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like before the H. Because when I write Halloween, I put a B before it. So I go, but Halloween. <laughs> That's what I actually call it. <laughs> <laughs> I call it, but Halloween. That's how I that write it. In very all... southern of you, yes. I... <laughs> That's how I write it in all my text messages. But Halloween. That's, yeah. And it, um... It doesn't stand for what you think it might stand for, because when you say that, it sounds like it stands for, like, bad Halloween, but that that's mm-hmm. not true. Um, it it stands for something else. So what do you think it stands for? The B? Yeah. The Halloween. Um, it's like when someone sneezes and they say, bless you. It's like, bless you, Halloween. It's it's a combination <laughs> of someone sneezing because of an allergy of candy and Halloween. <laughs> Well, you could be right, but you also could be wrong. <laughs> See, <laughs> when you say "bless you, Halloween," you're giving uh, inference to it's a uh, it's you know identity as a religious holiday. But as we know, mm-hmm. it's not right. It's it's not a religious holiday. 
Um, no, what it really stands for is uh, is this uh, this uh, message I got one time um, that a, fr- a text message from someone that was signed the baddest on earth, and so <laughs> I decided to put that before Halloween to call it. So instead of saying the baddest on earth Halloween, I just shortened it to B. The, but Halloween. But Halloween. But okay. But and it's almost like a stutter, like a but Halloween. But that's that's yeah. what you have to say. So that's why whenever on October thirty first, that's why I always um, go around to everyone. And I'm like but, ha- but Halloween. Well, I I didn't know that. I thought it was after the H because it was Happy Halloween. But you're just contracting happy to, <laughs> and you know combining <laughs> so <laughs> Halloween <laughs> Halloween because <laughs> it's easier. Okay, um, well, maybe you yours c- is right. You could be right, but you also could be wrong. So let's go That's on to true. the next one. What decade did trick or treating, as we know it today, start gaining popularity in America? Uh, two thousand and ten. You're right because that is before its decline, which is today because of Fortnite. No, oh, see, every there kid these exactly days right. is staying inside. No <laughs> one trick or treats anymore. Well, see, they all dress up on Fortnite in costumes anyway, so why That's wear true. one outside? I know, right? Perfect. And um, old people don't have fun, so it certainly wasn't anything before, like, 1980. No. Old people... See, every day is Halloween because old people are scary, so they're <laughs> right. everywhere. They're all walking skeletons. <laughs> right. The Grandma, Crypt Keeper... give me some candy. <laughs> the Crypt Keeper's walking around just to remind us that it's Halloween every day. Mm-hmm. We're so ageist. Like, no <laughs> people over. <laughs> okay, like, next question. Are you going to watch it? <clears throat> okay. Uh, and the answer to that, well, you know what? That was the answer. So, yep. okay, what were the original jack-o'-lanterns made from? Uh, original jack-o'-lanterns? Mm-hmm. I mean, we, now we make them out of pumpkins, right? right? What were they originally made out of? People. <laughs> people. J- Waldo started that. We know he did. He totally That's cut true. off their heads. We just and learned he that. Totally, just like performed his own little lobotomy and just like, but he didn't have to carve faces because they already had faces. So I was, hold on, hold on. Was was the guy that he um, ended? Jack. Well, yeah, was he Scottish? Was he Jack O'Lantern? <laughs> Jack O'Lantern. Maybe. May, I, I'm as, I'm assuming. <laughs> Jack or, or Irish? I guess that'd be Irish. I, that's right. I, like, I mean, yeah. what is yeah. what is the the lantern? What does that even really mean? I mean, this might be a, a stupid question. Like, I'm legitimately asking. And what is the O? Is it of? Is it on? Jack Jack O lantern. Wait, is Jack O lantern? I honestly have no idea. I I think oh. it's I think it is Irish. Jack O lantern. Yeah, stingy yeah. Irish folklore stingy jack or stingy jack well anyway okay. so well going back to this yeah Jeswaldo started all of this because he's the one mm-hmm. who murdered his wife whose name was jack and actually excuse me she was jacqueline and then there mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. uh the her lover whose name was jack um, No, his name was lantern oh that's right uh jacko jacqueline no lantern right and so uh-huh and, oh, and the way they got it is because as soon as people saw their corpses, it was just like a huge crowd going, oh. Uh-huh. That's it. So Jack, oh, oh lantern. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, there's no reason to dispute that at all. It was people. Yep. Um, okay, let's do a couple more. Okay. What percent of American parents say they don't eat some of their children's candy? What percent say they say don't? Yes. And I have a follow-up question, which is what percentage of American parents lie about that question? That's 100% because they oh, all yeah. eat all the candy. Oh, I, yeah. I, I'm right? pretty sure that every time I brought home candy, like it was gone the next day. And I which barely is, got to eat any of it. Why, as an adult, I actually have no desire to eat candy anymore. But if I did, I could buy my own bag and eat the whole thing. I would buy all my candy corn. Ugh, which is the uh, the next trivia question. I'll just give you this one for free. Okay. Um, which is the number two most popular Halloween candy, which is candy corn. Uh, toothbrushes. Ugh. Nickels. <laughs> oh, nickels, yeah. Or someone, or someone who gives out apples. Ugh. 
or that you're just asking to get it thrown back wrapped, at you the loosely wrapped in wax paper the black and orange wax paper unidentified taffy things which are laced with you know sadness sadness <laughs> and you know other paraphernalia <laughs> yeah and other things you don't want to ingest yes yeah we it's about as healthy as candy corn okay um Aww. here's our last question okay i'm excited what is the most popular Halloween costume for adults in 2015? A uh, the most po- wait wait for adults. Mm-hmm. For adults, and we can't say it's the um, the lewd version of something because that's the actual answer. It's oh, insert right. popular thing and then make it you know scandalous. Right, you just right. There's like nurse, and suddenly you're sexy nurse or right. Uh, well, the answer is uh, the most popular costume is mm-hmm. a um, is a bargain hunter at a farmer's market. Oh yeah, that's the most popular thing because remember, at a farmer's market is where you get all the vegetables that you give out to kids, mm-hmm. and so um, you buy your vegetables, you buy your your pumpkins that you make your jack-o'-lanterns out of, or you, you know, cut off someone's head and make your own jack-o'-lantern. Make sure they're named Jack. Don't don't mm-hmm. get any Jacks. Um, or don't make any lanterns that aren't Jack. And um, then by the time you get home after buying all your vegetables and all of your other various assorted toothbrushes and nickels that you're giving out Ugh. to your children coming to your doors, then you don't Ugh. have time to change because you're exhausted. Right. And so you're just going to sit in the yard or your driveway like a corpse – as Giswaldo intended, and mm-hmm. you're going to give out candy. So that's by far the most popular. You see, I, I think you're onto something there because they say it's a witch. Um, first of all, I think sandwich would be much more attractive. But Ooh, I like sandwich. I, I think the most popular Halloween costume would be a normal person probably in debt trying their best. Because let's be real. Of all the houses that don't have the lights on, there's a person inside just sitting in darkness going, please don't knock on my door. Please don't <laughs> ring my doorbell, please. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and uh, sidebar, uh, did the word sandwich come from which? Why is it called a sandwich? Because, because there is no from sand. from the Gobi. Oh, I, did, I was yeah. unaware. Okay. That's, well, where they, that's where the trees grow that they harvest the wood from to make their oh. brooms. Oh, well, that makes so much sense. Yeah. I've been enlightened. And they usually, um, you know, initially when they started learning flying, they'd smash a few of them together. So it'd be a collection of sandwiches. Um, and they call that a picnic. So a nice. group of witches is a picnic. Oh, that's, I I learned yep. again. A group of witches is called a picnic. Good. Mm. Well, I but learned a lot about Halloween today. The problem is with that, just one more thing, is that the relatives of the witches always got in the way, especially the ants. They always came and ruined the picnics. Uh, not the uncles, just the ants. Yeah. Oh, they ants ruin picnics. They do all the time. <laughs> and with that, I think we're going to end our little Halloween spooktacular. We hope you have a wonderful Halloween. We hope it's nice and spooky and scary and unless you don't like that in which I hope that someone else finds it fun to scare you. And that they find their Halloween spooky and scary and that you just deal with it. And I, we hope you all get massive tummy aches from eating way too much candy in a short period of time. This is the only day of the year where it's totally acceptable to completely gorge yourself on sugar and sweets that you absolutely don't need and wrecks all of our diets. So go do it. And that's going to do it for another episode of the Complete Musician Podcast. Uh, if you want to contact us, please go visit our website at www.coromotohorn.com. And our email is coromotohorn at gmail.com. So send us all of your favorite uh, your favorite Halloween candy recipes and what you're going to be giving out this year. And send James all of the emails telling him why he's wrong for not liking candy corn, because he's mm. totally wrong. And... Subscribe to us on iTunes because our podcast is there, which you're maybe listening here. Uh, or go listen to us on YouTube and find our channel there at Coromoto Horn Duo. And also like us on Facebook. I don't know if you mentioned that already, but we'll be posting our Mad Libs there. So it'll be fun. So thanks for listening. And see you later. <laughs>